Hey, welcome in everybody to the latest edition of the grittiest take from True Philadelphia and Sportscast. As you can see, we have both Pirlo and Steel Flyers here today. Both of them have been on separately for us, but never on the same show yet. We've been on the same show for Pirlo's pod. So uh, how are you guys doing today? I'll start with you, Pirlo. How's it going? I'm doing fantastic, doing what I my my favorite thing to do, talking about hockey, especially this Philadelphia Flyers and playoffs that are coming up right now. I'm pretty darn excited, let me tell you. Yeah, I, I echo all of that, and then Steele, I'm sure you <laughs> echo all of that. Oh, yeah. It is so nice to be able to actually talk real hockey. Yeah. Guys are really on the ice skating. They're really practicing. Mm-hmm. There's coaching going on. There's whistles being blown. There's guys sweating and yes. <laughs> no. Sure. Yeah. There's also, you see a lot of the joking banter. I saw, I think it was the Jets team. It was somebody. Mm-hmm. I saw a video. The guy scored and then they were running after him to do like a regular celebration mm-hmm. and he's all running away. Like, so they're not around. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, because they're all doing like, the social yeah. distancing sellies so, now. <laughs> well, they're all kind of able to be their normal selves and get back into the hockey model. So it's great seeing all these teams on the ice and uh, having all the um, reporting and stuff we have on it and being able to see also on Twitters, if you mm. follow the team's Twitters, most of them, most hockey teams have live Twitter stuff via their people every show yeah. from yeah. where not just the flyers but other teams from within the yep. facilities as well. Yeah. Okay. I've seen I've seen uh Pittsburgh showing video, I've seen Ottawa showing video, I've seen um Edmonton showing video, I've shown the Flyers showing video. Um I've shown Columbus showing video. So all kinds of videos of all kinds of players doing all kinds of hockey things yeah. in yeah July. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a different uh feel to it normally when these guys would be sitting back having their uh cold brews enjoying the summer vacation uh, yeah uh you know? they're in the mode for the playoffs but i think it's uh going to be great we have all this we're going to have hockey from some days 10 in the morning to about 10 30 at night uh depending what coastline you're on for some people where like where pirlo's at that's eight in the morning uh that you start watching and then for some it could be oh darn so so um that's uh that's um something that's going to be really fun to watch all day. oh but darn get... you get to watch hockey from eight o'clock in the morning until till eight o'clock at night gosh man that's yep. just such a tough day <laughs> <laughs> i think a thing i wanted to get into though was just how impressive the flyers have looked First and foremost, since coming back, AV complimented on how well guys look. They wanted to be there, in quotes, the veterans are doing a great job. Yeah, uh, in shape. Keeping guys in the right mindset since coming. Yeah, and in shape. And also, but the big thing I want to talk about first, because we haven't had this in Philly in years, is the fact that we now have a goaltender that's young behind Carter Hart that's being Very touted so far in the first days of camp. He did fantastic in the ECHL this year in Kirill Ostomenko. And we now have goaltending depth in this team. And it's not just him. It's Sandstrom, Urson, who's still overseas. Yeah. uh, Yeah, Rowdy Ross and others. Guys coming up. What do you guys think about the fact that for the first time in really my entire lifetime, this organization has goaltending depth? Wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you go first since you said yeah. This actually, this is franchise changing because we have ownership and we have management and now we have team. And everybody's all buying into the same, we're all drinking out of the same cup of coffee, basically. And you're right. For the first time in a very, very, very long time, we actually have goalie depth. And not just depth. We have prospects that are coming up, kids that are coming up that could potentially be starters You know, down the road. We're, we're going to see some of those guys come in, and they're going to play for the Phantoms first. And you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming you're talking a lot about Mr. Lyon. Uh, well, Mr. Mr. Alex Lyon. Well, Lyon – I talked about this when I responded to somebody on Twitter today. 
um, that Jamie and I were responding to. I think if Lion, if Elliot leaves and you decide to have Lion as your backup, how it probably slots is Ostomenko will become right. the high starter. Yes. Sandstrom, who struggled a bit, will be a um, Redding starter, I would think. Oh, Redding. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he gets okay. a lot of playing time like Ostomenko did and then really gets going again because I think he's a good goalie. He just needs a little bit more time. And that'll be how they do that. And then I don't think Urson's coming over, but you have to look at when the kid wants to come over, yeah. over from overseas. Yeah. So you have to keep paying attention to that. First time ever we have goalie depth, man. I can't even begin to tell you what kind of – how that changes how the Flyers can approach yeah. games now. I mean, with strategy, with uh, – how you set up teams for the power play, how you set up teams for the penalty kill, because not only is Carter Hart, he's he's that really he's that really good kid that can make those stops, but he's also a good puck mover. You know, so he he can be that guy that can make that pass if we need him to. You know what I mean? Kind of Brodeur esque, kind of being able to uh, pop out of the net there and 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 gather up the puck. You know what I mean? So yeah. I can't even begin to tell you what it does for this team, what it does for the future of this team, and what it does for the team right now. Yeah. Because I think if you remove Carter Hart from our lineup or from the picture right now, you, you really can't talk about Philadelphia being a being in the position that we're in. No, definitely not. Right. Uh, you, so, you, you sure can. And I didn't even bring up uh, our pick last year, first year – um, well, he's played in the WHL. This is the first year he struggled a little bit, but they took a chance on Rowdy Ross in the sixth round, and he yeah. had good numbers in the AJHL and in uh, a lot of other leagues as a young kid putting up over 920 save percentages. This year he was down a little bit, and but uh, it's his first year after getting picked by a team. Sometimes that happens, I think. Or bounce back next year. That's another death. But uh, Pirlo, what do you feel about the fact that the Flyers, for the first time in a long time, actually have goaltending death? Well, I mean, it's it's not something they're used to. No, <laughs> definitely not. No. Uh, no. I think you can also give a high five to uh, you know like he, his impact on the team keeps on coming. Is Hextall right? Yeah, that's right. It just keeps on coming in. This kid in particular um, was picked higher than expected when he was drafted. Yeah. He's from Belarus. This is not a pick that Philadelphia probably picks in the old regime and way of looking at Definitely things. Definitely not. Right? <laughs> Hextall brought in a whole new way of looking at and paying attention to drafting and uh, analytics players up and stuff like that. And, yeah, he struggled a little bit. He had to go. But the thing that I liked about it is they identified that you're coming from Belarus <laughs> to the United States. A totally different culture, a totally yeah. different everything. Yeah, yeah. And they're being patient with this kid. He yeah. went to reading. You did a lot better. He got, you know, he got comfortable. And uh, I don't think that's, a, I mean, his, he, he, he was at uh, Dinamo, right? He played for Dinamo. Uh, in the yeah, KHL. he only played like one game up with them, and then I think he usually played for their MHK team, their yeah. pro team. But okay, but right. he played. Yeah, he's the one. I was talking more. Um, Ross had the down year. The only downtime um, Ostomenko had was his one game with Dynamo in the KHL. Other than that, he was really good over there in the uh, yeah. MHL. I, uh... <laughs> he put up some killer numbers in the MHL at 1.78, yeah. 9.27. But like, um, it was still, uh, uh, he wasn't projected in the third round. No, they, re yeah. they reached, they reached for him, and he looks like he's going to be a player. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what is it like to have goaltending depth? It's wonderful. But what's even more wonderful about it is, I imagine, I hope. I really hope that Chuck Fletcher and listens to the organization and feeds off what Ron Hextall brought to this organization and keeps it going. Seems like because, he's doing that. Yeah, I, I think he will. I think he's a yeah. brilliant general manager. But, uh, yeah, you can't live without it. And, and Philadelphia has shown that in the past. They've had great teams, but goaltending had, was always mm -hmm. the issue. 
and we you know, you know big high five and and a hand and and an applaud to Ron Hexel for for bringing this to this organization. You know, it's funny how we're a year removed. Well, not a little bit off of a year removed from when he got fired. And you know what? Here's the really killer thing for the next five or six years. We're going to still be talking about Ron Hextall and what he did for the Flyers. Absolutely. Because that's how deep he built the cupboards for us. Because we had nothing. I mean, he, he we came with nothing. He had we were almost over the cap. We were we were technically we were over the cap. If it wouldn't have been for some of the long term injuries that we had, we would have been over the cap. You know what I mean? That's why we kept teaming and out for a while there, and that's why we kept some other players out for a while there, so that we because we were over the cap. And he had no he had no choice, and and he had no room to do anything with anybody. And and yeah, so. I think we're going to be thanking Ron Hextall for multiple years in the future with what he did with the with we the Flyers were, as far we as that's really concerned. We were really fortunate to have Ron for the time we did. Yeah, for sure. I agree. And I do think um, Flair and Fletcher showed in next or next year's and last year's draft that they were still going by the similar mantra because they drafted a defenseman when a bunch of people wanted Caulfield, and then. They picked Brink, who is in most people's eyes the second best scorer of that draft. Anyway, yeah. in the second round, so yeah. he got what people would consider a two-way fix when everybody freaked out about not getting Caulfield. So that's um, I think they went by even the mantra that seems like a hextall thing to do. Say let's keep adding to our defense and then get a good guy we like in the second round that can also add to our scoring rather than getting a call field and then having the lesser defenseman. It's easier to get a guy. It's, yeah. it's, it's a much better chance of making a guy stick. If you get a defenseman in the higher rounds and if you get him in the lower rounds, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm for one and I took a lot of flack for this. I wasn't as high on Caulfield as a lot of people were anyway. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't think he's at the point cat. We'll see, but uh, I don't think he's quite that good. He could yeah. end up, being a lesser version, like a, a poor man's version of that, I could prove t- I could end up being incorrect. But I like Bobby Brink. I think that was a nice move. Yeah, so, I um, do too. I agree. And I like the way Philadelphia develops. There, I, I like the way we develop our play, our our uh, team our team now. I like the way that's, they develop their youth. That's why I like Scott Gordon, uh, coaching the Phantoms, um, because I I think he has been a huge factor in allowing the kids to play down there and play in a very similar system to what we're playing up here in the, with the big boys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And he's giving them that ice time and he's putting them in, in those situations that they need to be in. You know what I mean? And give them them, giving them that experience that they need. You know what I mean? So uh, I have been very impressed even with the Hextall firing. Cause we, we all saw that coming. You know what I mean? But I, th- I agree with what you said, Joe. I think Fletcher is following in the same footsteps. He's doing exactly the same things. He's drafting the same exact kind of players for the exactly the same kind of reasons. Not only that, but he's also signing the prospects that Hextall has also brought in to the fold, right? We're signing guys. We've been signing guys all left and right this past spring, summer, whatever. You know what I mean? So he, he's keeping the guys. He's, he's following that mantra. So I agree 110%. Yeah, and also they do a good job dividing because him and Brett Flair have a long-lasting relationship. They do a very good job allocating duties. Flair actually takes on the draft a lot more than Chuck Fletcher. Yeah. So um, Flair is actually your Notre Dame when it comes to the draft, per se, uh, than uh, Fletch is. Um, Gosh, what a horrible problem to have, geez. Just like our goalie depth. What a horrible problem to have, geez. (laughs) Yeah, you kind of have two potential GMs as your Mm. ones who has the assistant job. Um, But now from goaltending, let's switch it over to the fact, since we're talking about another great youngster that's impressed, you have Jaeger Zamula coming over from the WHL and dominating for Russia in the World Juniors. Um. And is now from coaching staff, they love what they've seen. I'm not so sure they're not thinking about just saying, yeah, you know, you might actually play right away. Um, we'll see what happens, but 
his talent level, he was working with the power play and getting all that in in camp. He's an interesting kid. Uh, what do you guys think about how much he's impressed since getting, an, again, another great undrafted pickup just like Philippe Myers? So what do you guys think about him? I'll let Pirlo start with this one. Well, like you said, I mean, just getting him in the first place. I mean, his numbers are absolutely fantastic. He's a six six foot three now. <laughs> <laughs> He is only, I mean, at the cap friendly has him listed as 170 pounds. I think he could definitely use to get some weight on there. I don't know if that's the case now. That was a, who, who, when they put the, hit this up there, I'm not sure. I imagine he's gained some weight since then. I'd be a little apprehensive to throw him right in. But when you're putting up numbers like that, at 56 points in 61 games in the AHL in 2018, 19 and uh, a point a game this year plus at the world junior champions five and seven and you're six foot three and you can skate like this kid and yeah. you didn't even waste a draft pick on him he also oh, had God. yeah he also wow. had we did a, we did amazing picking this guy up <laughs> yeah he also had 11 games for seven points um in his first year this year i believe he played for um the, yeah, he did still play for the Hitman. And in, but in his first year for the Hitman, he had seven points in 11 playoff games. Obviously, we did not get to the postseason this year. And we don't know if he would have been playing if they did have the normal postseason because he was coming back from back surgery compared to having all this extra time. Uh, the tentative thing is with me mostly because of the back surgery. I think the offensive skill, if he didn't have that injury, yeah, the weight is a concern to me, but I would have put him in right away. But still, uh, what do you think about hmm. the back surgery? Is what gives me. A little yeah, bit. Uh, no, I'm with you on that. But he has had the time to um, get that strengthened up and rest it up. He looks really good in camp, and frankly, I think he's going to probably play ahead of Ghost. Because I it's think just, would he play ahead of Hager? Because Hager would be ahead of Ghost. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think that's going to be the case. No, look, yeah. I guarantee you, we're going to see him. In at least the exhibition game, or potentially at least in one of the round robin games, I guarantee you we're going to probably see at least a good portion of those young guys in 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 the round robin games, because in essence we have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So, yeah. why not give these guys a shot? See what we got. You know what I mean. No, that makes total sense. You might as well just uh, – you're going to put some of the guys in, like A.V. Yeah. said. He wants to get everyone. They're, it seems like we're focusing a lot more on the first playoff game and just throwing our cards at the round, Rob. It's not like we're not trying. It's we're, We want to make sure we give everybody the ample playing time. Uh, but also with our team, because of our roster depth, you, we'll get to this later, you still have a good chance of being pretty successful doing that because – if you're throwing in a Zamua instead of a Hag, that's a great talent level. It's not like you're saying we're throwing in a Brandon Manning instead of somebody that on your You own. had to get that name in there, uh, didn't you? So, um, <laughs> the, but, yeah, I had to use that one. Yeah, you had Flyers to get that fan, one in there. Flyers fans uh, know that that was a pain in the butt having him stay in the lineup a lot longer than he should have. Look, um, you're gonna have some guys, Joe. You look, you you got. You're gonna have some guys that are just gonna be are just gonna force your hand. And I think guys like Zamula, like Friedman, those guys are forcing the coach's hand. Okay, because they're playing really well, they're up on their skates, and they're doing the things that they've been asked to do. So let's see what the kids got. Okay, and we'll go from there. Because that's what I think is exactly what's going to happen. We're going to see those kids come in and play for the first couple games. And I think that what what AV is doing is treating these round-robin games as actually the preseason. That Yeah, in a sense. Obviously, he's going to tell them to play a little bit of No, no, no. More. Yeah. Yeah, but what I mean by that is because he's going to try and play everybody. Okay, when if you look at a regular preseason of, of the hockey world – you don't play your your star players very rarely play the first 
preseason game. And and if they even play a preseason game, it's not until like the second or third. And even if it is, it's only for a period or two. You know what I mean? You're not going to see Drew out there skating around or Coots out there skating around in preseason games. Not the first one, at least. Or maybe you might see one of them. You know what I mean? That's what I think is happening. I think he's treating these round robin games as our preseason coming out of camp. Okay. And and he's gonna play all the kids, see what we got, and then we're gonna hit the ground running when it comes to the playoffs. No, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, he's gonna see if anybody has a chance to play their way into the lineup right away rather than deciding that we're gonna wait to next year to have them be a bigger factor of the team. But I think a big thing with our Flyers, too, is just how good guys have stepped up and played when needing to be put in roles. And I think someone we should talk about with where he could fit in and step up in the playoffs is Albe Kubel, who we talk about how guys develop at different rates. It's a good thing they gave him the chance to develop because he definitely really helped you out this year as a former second round pick. So He's a guy that stepped in. I think mo- mostly they were thinking we'll have him in. He'll play pretty well for maybe a week or some change when we have injuries, and then we'll probably send him on his way back down to Lehigh. And then he came in and didn't miss a beat, uh, played very well in short order, and he had no chance of being sent back down to Lehigh because he was actually probably one of the most consistently mistake-free people on the team. So – What do you guys think of him going into the postseason and also just how much he impressed during this season in Nicholas Albe Kubel? I'll let Steele start with that one. Perla, you were talking about him before we started doing the show, right? And you said that you thought his game was going to be a much better game, especially now when he gets more ice time. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think think that point right there is the key point right there. The more ice time that he's going to get, the better he's going to play. You know what I mean? And th- that's why I wanted to I'm, – I'm really glad we got into this because I wanted to uh, briefly touch on that too because you said it. I, I really – I like his game. He has developed into a, a good 200-foot player. And, and man, he, he's got some hands and he's got some good vision, okay? And, and I like what he's bringing to the table. He's got some speed, okay, and he's got some feistiness and – like I said, uh, I agree with exactly what you said, Perla, before we were talking to the show, mm-hmm. um, that, that he the more ice time he gets, the better off he's going to be. So, yeah, I'm all for putting him in. And I don't even care. I would put him in wherever. He's one of those guys like Scott Lawton where you can kind of just throw him in anywhere and he's going to shine. You know what I mean? So, Yeah, the impressive thing is how much he's shined for being on the third line and at times the fourth line being able to get – uh, 15 points in 36 games. Normally playing down there, you play the mistake-free, good PK, get the puck out of your zone, good uh, pesky game he plays, but you don't get the 15 points uh, when yeah. you came up and were playing. Also, yeah. pretty good, but inconsistent in the AHL and then just hit it in the NHL. Uh, that's the thing that I always believed in him, so I thought he had a chance, but I think the reason most people were on the fence was it's not like he was lighting it up in the AHL before his call up, he was looking better in those, like a lot of people in those week before he got called up. And then we called him up and then, well, voila, uh, it all fell into place. So I think he's a guy now, he's going to be a money saver for the team because, yeah, you're going to have to pay him, but you're not going to be paying him a boatload. So he's going to help you with his skill set because his first contract whenever you give it to him, probably eventually is going to be worth less than how he plays, depending how many years you give him. Because he's one of those guys that is going to keep growing. So if you gave him a couple years already, you're he's eventually going to outplay that. Like Friedman next year has a perfect chance to outplay 725K. Like, that's not that much if he plays and he takes Justin Braun's spot and that's where they supplant him and he plays well all year. Well, he's definitely worth more than 725K. That's more of a something in the millions defensive. So that's the good thing problem you have here, too. You're going to be able to, to, be able to have a lot of guys that pay, pay pretty good contracts, contracts and potentially have great contracts for them. So that's a good issue we have as well. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what I love about Obey 
is uh, he's an he, he came in as an offensive player, um, and you know he scored a lot of goals in junior, thirty eight goals in sixty one games, and uh, you said that he was sort of incons. You me- you mentioned that he was inconsistent in the AHL, but I think they sent him down and said we want you to focus on defense because we think you've got a chance in this league if you can get your defense to be uh, where it needs to be for the NHL. And he didn't just do that. He went and made his defense a strength in the NHL. Like, and then also ended up, then worked towards his offense after that. So he didn't complain. He didn't, you know, he showed a lot of maturity, went down, learned the game on the defensive side of the game, which might have hurt his offense in the AHL but did what they told him to do. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's the, he had, he struggled a little bit getting the offense from the defense, maybe focusing too much on the defense and yeah. then came back up and earned that. He forced his way up that lineup. I find that Bay is forcing his way up the lineup in, 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 in Philadelphia. I love, like I mentioned before, I, I love him. I think he's great. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I figured I would let somebody else try to make a big point since I usually don't like trying to make major points when I'm hosting. Um, but yeah, Abe, Abe, Abe Kubel. No, you know what, though? Look, I, Abe I think. Abe Kubel is a guy. He stepped up. Um, he stepped up in big moments, like you said, as a scorer when he played in the juniors, especially in the postseason. And then he was able to figure out the defense. I think Lawden, how Steele brought Lawden up, that's a perfect guy because he worked on – well, Lawden was more of an offensive guy, but he, he worked on his defense. But he didn't only work on his defense. Lawts also, of course, worked on his skating. Of course, Nick yeah, didn't have to worry about – Yeah, because he wasn't about, that great of a skater. Yeah, yeah. Nick didn't have to worry about that fact. No, Nick's he hasn't got that at all. Skater. Yeah. 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 No, you, you, you exactly brought up the point I was just going to make. Um, I, I think he did exactly what Lawton did. He – he swallowed his pride and said, yep, if I listen, this guy's going to help me be better. And you know what I mean? Look, I've been noticing that a lot about the guys under AV now, mm-hmm. where guys are getting more and more. Um, <laughs> so cool. <laughs> yeah. That's Sorry really about good, that. That's a really good point. AV's influence on these guys. Yes. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Especially because AV preaches, and Jake kind of got at it in an article that was in the Inquirer a couple weeks ago to go from the defense up. And learning from that has made him have his best year overall. It, well, I always say Peter Laviolette got the best offensive version of Jake Voracek. Yes. Uh, what AV's getting is the best overall version of Jake Voracek yes. right now, and much what, rather have that. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, obviously, yeah, for sure. And but with Knack, I think what he saw is literally what his nickname is. <laughs> he has a Knack, a knack. For my system. Well, that's like, great. Oh, that's he, great. He, he literally is. We made him into. I'm going to get my offense from first being good in my own zone now, and because I have the shot. And the sneaky shot we saw the goals he scored this year, like you called him a goal scorer in the OA, in the not the OJ, the QMJHL he played him, but in the juniors, and he was a guy that you still see that you see he picks a spot in the net and he scores goal scoring goals. He doesn't score the goals that is just mm-hmm. oh the guy got a goal like Scotty Upshaw used to score as a hard working yeah. type of player. Yeah. He scores those goal scoring s goals. He's and, smart. Yeah, I think AV almost went, holy crap, this guy could literally <laughs> be the perfect fit for my system. I don't yeah, know really. what the upside on Opel is. I mean, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what I think I we're think seeing about, it. Kubel, well, I don't know what the upside on him is. I mean, he, he could go a lot higher than I even anticipated. Kubel, I mean, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's going to be interesting because I think next year he's going to be on both special teams units at yep. time. Uh, you know, he like, already seen the power play and he's been on the PK quite a few times already. Bringing in Hayes, um, who's played under AV, was a huge keystone for Fletcher, a huge keystone for the Flyers. <laughs> Notice how I'm saying keystone. Um, but when you look at it, because he's played under AV's system and he knows AV's system inside and out. 
Okay. And when you get a guy like that that comes in who's a voice in the locker room, okay, a leader, he's a vet, he's been around for a little while. And now you got the young guys like Knack, okay, that are coming along and seeing what's going on. And then you see what AV's doing and the system that he's installing there for those guys, he's making them responsible. He's making them accountable for being in the defensive zone first. Bring, do the defensive zone side first. That will lead to the offensive zone. That is exactly what's going on. Mm. Yep, yeah. exactly. And well, you brought up a good point about Gordon down there. You know, that's what, like, he's magic with these kids, it seems to be as well. You know, And they're just, um, they're just playing the same kind of system where they, they bring the kids in down there with Gordon and they say, all right, Gordon, you know, let them let him go and, and, and here we go. You know what I mean? Look, I'm going to tell you something. In the next couple of years, you're going to see Lehigh is going to be Calder Cup. Calder Cup, Calder Cup. They definitely have a chance. That's uh, what I mean. A very good chance to continuously be a competitive um, team. Uh, I think especially because, like I said, if Alstomenko steps up for them next year, you're going to have him as your starting goalie. Sandstrom's probably going to step up like Alstomenko did for Reading, and then you have more mm-hmm. good issues there with your goaltender. Yeah, mm-hmm. York comes uh, up for the same Oh, yeah, boy. Cammy <laughs> Cam, Cam, uh, or Gritty number two. Um, yeah. <laughs> Should uh, have a uh, opportunity next year potentially. Uh, the for sure goes on with for uh, sure. schools and all that good stuff. <laughs> but uh, the um, doesn't this I, feel good? Doesn't this feel good to talk about hockey? Oh yeah, man. I mean, we we've just been going, you know, we're just flying and we're just talking about hockey, and this is great. This I. I can't tell you how much fun I'm having just talking about hockey. You know what I mean? Because this is this is what we're all kind of rooting for. This is what we've all been kind of chomping at the bit for, you know. And now we finally got it, and it's like, I can't get enough. I just yeah. need some more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm, no, that's definitely true. I think, I think one of our most um, – impressive things that we did in the off season was Fletcher obviously focused on not only bringing in AV, but knowing getting with AV to know, to bring in your other veterans, you brought in Mike Yao and you brought in Terry in, and then you obviously kept, which was a good decision. Agreed. He had all the relationships with the players oh. already. It wasn't an issue. He was actually a very good coach in Haxtell's room. Uh, you kept Lappy. So all of those things really helped everyone to Two be cups. perfect. Yeah, perfect. Order. Two cups. Uh, the coaches that we brought in have all, you know, Yao and Terrian, two cups with Pittsburgh. So they obviously know how to do something right. They won Stanley Cups. So Terrian's um, we... a genius. Terrian's a genius. Terrian will probably be a general manager one day. He does seem like that. He really helped our defense. He's, he's a, oh really, my gosh! Brilliant mind. Yeah, he he got he more or less got fired because he rubbed players kind of the wrong way, personality wise. He he's very demanding. But as far as it's because like if you have if if a person has that kind of a mind, it can be very frustrating when people don't listen to you. Yeah, Terrian is an absolute genius. Yeah, he's Shiro did not want to fire guy. him. Shiro did not want to fire him. He really no. didn't. You know no. what I mean? No. He did not want to fire him. But the, the, but everybody was calling for his head. So and Yo there was... is a fantastic motivator. So it's a perfect combination. Yeah. Those yeah. All those guys fit in. And Lappy's kind of a combination of things. Uh, exactly. He's good at communicating with the players. He's a pretty exactly. good Exactly. He's that good he's transition. That combo, dude, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I – I mean, I agree when we said uh, earlier, or, um, we have so many guys coming up. That's also why I know we talked about before the podcast. It seems like you brought up Cam York. We have Zamula. Um, we have Hoberg, who we signed recently. Uh, Wiley. Um, there's a boatload of defensemen. So, St. Avania, you got all those different people. Um so we have all these people. Ghost just seems like the odd man out at this point. And I would think 
both of you agree with that at this point. I'll let us start with that one. The writing's fairly strong on the wall there, guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to quote a very famous movie. I don't know if you guys know this movie. It's one of my favorites. Um, it starred Kurt Russell and a host of other people. And Powers Booth said it best. Well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, look, it's a shame because really, really loved Ghost when he came to the Flyers. Really. And then when he lit it up and then was in the running for the Calder Trophy. And and then the second year he Hello. came back and, and and he was doing really well. And, 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 and then... Then the tires just kind of came off. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, okay, uh, you're not scoring the goals. You're not being responsible down on your end. And now you're not getting the ice time because now the coaches are sitting you. Now you're a healthy scratch. So you can't improve your numbers sitting up in the press box. And even no, Hackstall, <laughs> Hackstall didn't even like Ghost very much, didn't play him very much, was a healthy scratch quite a few times, quite a few games. I, Look, when when he had that that first year he came out and was lighting it up offensively, nobody had saw that before, okay? And it's just like what you said, Joe, earlier about some other players. When you're in the NHL long enough, people figure you out, and guess what? He got figured out. And he's not big enough and strong enough to overpower you, okay? And he's not necessarily fast enough, per se, to outskate you either. He's He's got good enough skills to be a decent defenseman if he can narrow down his defensive end. He's really good on the offensive side, but he's not he hasn't picked up that responsibility of being in the defensive side yet. And I think that's what's hurt his game. My take on Ghost, and I could be wrong here, but I just think that his philosophy and the team's philosophy doesn't mesh. And yep. uh, that's mm-hmm. really what it comes down to. He doesn't seem to want to buy into the team philosophy. Yeah. Uh, he coaches, you know, and he may have a point and maybe in another team, there's a philosophy out there that he'll, he'll, he'll match well, well with. But yeah. Obviously I don't. The, it's not the Philadelphia philosophy, Flyers philosophy. Yeah. You have Krogeroff for a reason. That's the Philadelphia Flyers philosophy and ghost. We don't ask you to be Krogeroff, but there's an element to the game that we need and uh, it doesn't for them. They believe that he's not willing to provide it as much as they need him to do. And it seems like it's been a way. And not only that mentally, it just seems to be a been a weight on God ghost. That, yeah. That Cause he's had a lot of pressure put on him. Yeah. So you know, yeah, especially after that first year and for ghost, that things move on. And unfortunately there's not going to be much of a return for him. I don't think. Yeah. I think uh, he's a guy I have always um, liked him as well, but it just got to a point. All these guys stepped up. He doesn't, what you said perfectly describes it. The philosophies don't match a coach that was just on interviews with Sportsnet, TSN, now NHL, all of the big syndicate, Lindy Ruff, who got hired from the way he talks about how he likes his defenseman starting his offense. I don't he's not. I hope we don't trade him to the Devils. But if he got hired by someone else, yeah. I would say that philosophy would probably play into Ghost's hands. But I don't want us trading him to the Devils, so he needs to find some other coach that that philosophy plays. I'm going to give you a team. I think he goes. Uh, to. I'll tell you what. I think he goes right. to the Nashville Predators. Predators. Yeah, I was also thinking if they wanted. They don't necessarily – it depends how much they think Byram's going to be, uh, how effective he's going to be on both ends initially. But if they think, like, McCarr is great on both ends initially, Byram has the chance to do that. They could ch- – want Ghost is another just adding to that ridiculous quarterback power play yeah, talent, good, which would then just make point. that one yeah. fair. Yeah. He I'll wouldn't come. have to be the guy there in Colorado either. He could just no. kind of slip into the lineup. Yeah. What if he went to the Panthers? Well, um, that's not good for his career, probably because most people <laughs> sometimes that doesn't work out so well. I think okay, but Panthers think of it like really, this: I think Quinville's the down there really looking for somebody more defensive than Ghost. I think does. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. That's, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, because if Matheson played well in his first year, they yeah. probably would have been more likely to get 
a guy like Ghost, but the fact that he made that contract look like a mistake already, um, yeah. Yeah. that makes it seem like you're going to want to get something. And better. Yandel isn't what you call stellar in this defensive zone either. So, I mean, <laughs> no, no, he's not. No, he's a good defensive. So, yeah, it uh, might not be the best fit for him there. But I get you because Florida does need defense, but I don't know if Coach right. would be the best fit. Yeah, I said look, it might not be the best fit. It might not be the best fit, but that you have to look at who's going to be available. You know what I mean? So he might not be the best fit that what we think, but they might look at him and go, wow, this is a player available. We'll take that. Oh, who knows? I don't That's know. That's what I mean. Think. Yeah. I don't you know, know what so. They're gonna think. I don't know what right. they're going to think. I would I hope. I just it's... said Nashville because Nashville seems to be good at taking that system. reclamation projects and yeah. making them into players, right? So yeah. uh, they are like, <laughs> notorious for and bringing up defensemen and stuff like that. So. Another team I was thinking of would be they lack scoring if they want to add a quarterback to their power play and a better puck-moving defenseman on top of who they have. Granted, this team would also be better adding in a good defensive defenseman as well, but they have the money to do both. Uh, he could potentially go to Arizona. Uh, yeah. because they could – Ekman Larson has not been as consistent in recent years, so maybe having a, taking some pressure off of him too and having yeah. two guys that can be – he can yeah. be on the top power play, Ghost can be on the second power play. That will also help Ekman Larson. So I was Actually, do you know that Arizona that next year, almost every one of their defensemen comes off the pot, cap? Is yeah, really? yeah, is yeah, up for, yeah. yeah, so they're probably not going to be able to sign. They almost all become UFAs next year, so they're going to have to restructure their whole defense if they can if they can sign a couple. Well of then, <laughs> so that 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 could be a good place for them too. Yeah, and of man. Course, we know we got Rick Tockett. You know that's not. And how bad. and Arizona is not even remotely close to being up against the cap, right? So they're not. Oh yeah, close. they are. Oh, are they? they are. Oh, because that's going to be I a consideration they're... because you're going to have to eat Ghost's well, salary. We also have to remember, I think Ranta's on the books for next year. We don't know if with how how where they feel with Kemper, if they're going to try to get a lesser money backup in there and use anti Ranta's trade value to – yeah get some assets since he played very well when Kemper was out. That's the reason they're in the position he was able to pick up and play pretty well. So that's going to be an interesting thing. They have some guys they could move. Also, Ekman Larson, like I just said, who's been inconsistent. He he has a big contract, but if somebody wants it, he's been in rumors in recent years. So who the heck yeah. knows that organization? That's another organization that's a little hard to peg exactly what they're doing all the time. <laughs> After next year, Goligoski, Jalmerson, Osterle, and Demirs comes off the books on their D. Wow. So that's four of their D. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's they. That's a lot. Could use that. It's they got the Taylor Hall situation. Um, they're 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 screaming that they want to sign him. He's going to be ten million. So they got their own things to worry about there. But I mean, there's an opportunity <laughs> down the road there. For uh, for ghost maybe uh, yeah and then of I course think you got that, expansion coming up yeah maybe the expansion team wants to give them a shot too right and well yeah because that's what that's not next year though right no yeah after next after after next year I think yeah after so 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 we would still have to we would still have to carry ghost for another year then if, yeah, if we I were mean, if we trade him somewhere they could make him available or what have you. Oh, okay, okay. But I, I was just trying to see if we could make him because we have to put if out our list. If he got Arizona, I think they would make, honestly, John Morrison potentially, oh, since he's on the last year of his yeah. deal, I think they would make him expendable because even though he's better in his yeah. zone, obviously. Depending um, on how he's Ghost a good, performs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if Ghost performs well in the first couple of weeks, I think Jomerson will be a guy because he's on the last year if they can get something for him and a team will eventually overpay too if he's mm. playing really well. That, that that I think is something they'll look to. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree 100%. But know, so. um, for the last uh, 15 minutes of this video, I figured we should talk about – where we think the Flyers and predict our record, where we think we're going to go in this round, Robin. And even though AV is going to play everybody, we have a hell of roster depth between having 
guys like Rupsoff be up who barely even had his NHL career start. You got Fairby, you got Bunneman, you got obviously all those guys. And then you got Frost who has all the talent, but he's, I don't think he's going to start right away, but he has all the talent for if a great offensive player does go down. Look, ah, sick. Um, I think that that's going to be huge for us. But what do you guys think with where how, where do you put our record in this round, Rob? And how successful do you think we're going to be? I'll start with you. Here. Well, two and one. Two and one. Okay, what about you, Pirlo? Well, two and one seems like the most likely one. Um, I, I think it depends, like you said, on the philosophy that they go into with this round robin and other teams as well. I think different teams are going to come in with different philosophies. Do we want to use it as a uh, as like a preseason, like you said, like like you say? And honestly, I don't know what AB's philosophy is going to be here yeah. um, or oh no i was boston, just i was just assuming yeah but is boston is there a team he did say, say he's gonna play everybody so that's so the, he did okay so i might say like one not two. not necessarily the whole roster but like all the people you think of a chance yeah. right. i might say one and two going on what other teams may do because i think boston sullivan is not going to go that direction i think sullivan's going to going to try to get everybody ramped up so they're they're all working towards uh, having a, a lot of um, momentum going into this next round that's coming in. Washington uh, or Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay as well. I, I, I think their roster's set. I don't think they're going to worry too much about playing right. younger players to see who we can fill in here, fill in there, fill in there. Right. And I don't necessarily think one philosophy is better than the other. It depends on your team. Uh, it depends on and and for Philadelphia for us, I think you got. I think we're you guys are probably right. It's probably it might be better for us to to see how Zamulin is going to play, to see who's going to give us the better spot because we have that available at this moment. Yeah, so might as well establish the best roster we can right now. Yeah, I think you're also probably see Frost potentially in a round robin game because you're going to want to get him in those bigger quote-unquote bigger games um so and you're playing for seeding and i think that's something you might see but i think it's all great you want to get these guys as much experience as possible this is great for them having this extra camp for one is a blessing in disguise in the end of all this uh uncertainty and negativity with the stoppage and everything we now have positive stuff and blessings in disguise with these camp for all these young guys to come in and get extra work especially uh, teams that have good young goaltending uh, to bring in extra goaltenders to take to the hub with you. That that experience is going to be huge uh, for people. Yeah, no, can't can't agree with you more on that one. I mean, it's I tell you what, <clears throat> there's a lot of talent on the team, and when when the coach comes out and says that he's going to play everybody, I'm thinking that he's looking at this as a preseason. And I agree with what you said, Perlo. I think um, Boston's going to come out gunning. Okay. Just like I think Washington is too. And I think, and I, unfortunately, I don't think Tampa Bay is going to be able to do that because of the Stamkos issue. And he may not play in those first two games. He might play in the game that he plays in against us because they've already come out and said that he's going to be limited in, in the round Robin games. Okay. So, he may not play in those first two games and may only play in the game that he gets to us, or he may play in the first game and not play in the last two games or, and I think that's going to weigh heavily into how all of this shakes down because if Stamkos is in the lineup and we play against Tampa Bay, that's going to be a different game. Yeah. It's also going to be a lot different for him though. If he played in any game prior or if that's his first, uh, game right. especially if the flyers beat uh the bruins in washington and they're coming in 2-0 and oh and steven stamkos even though the talent level he's at is coming into his first game in the round rob right or what they so, might do is they might play in the second game and the third game and, and have him skip yeah. the first game you know what i mean so but th i think that's going to factor into it as well so so probably you think we're, we're only going to win one game that's not what i think i think it's possible possible because 
we're, like it, it's simply because we're looking at uh, trying. Oh, because some, of how we're doing trying it. some things that may have a chem- Boston okay. doesn't really have anybody to try that with. They got to go with their roster. Right? Yeah. They yeah. We we're fortunate enough to have enough yeah. depth to prepare a few of these guys to see where we can get maybe a better matchup here with uh, with a young player. If Zamelin goes in there and lights it up, that's freaking awesome, right? Yeah, right. So why not give it a shot? But we, we are taking a risk that Zamelin maybe is a little over his head. And if he is over his head, that's not very a very good position to be in in a playing round when you've got the other team who's got their full roster going. You know what I mean? So I think it's possible that way. Um, if uh, I'm not making a prediction, I mean, that's really hard. I mean, Carter Hart, yeah. Carter Hart may, is the equalizer to anything we decide to do. If he decides <laughs> to stop every puck like he can, we're going 3-0. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's uh, – I think the Flyers will go – because we play Boston well, even though we have two, I think if you play as well as you played in that game we lost, you still will win. I don't think that the hockey gods are going to take over and have uh, your goalie turn into a brick wall, even though it's Tuka Reyes' capability. Normally, when you outplay them that much, that doesn't happen twice in a row. So if you play a good game again like that, I don't think it's going to be fully stored, yeah. especially because part, like you said, it might be a one nothing game if both of the goalies play great and then somebody just squeaks one in and then you get the win that way. And then Washington depends who they put in. I, if, if I were them, I would put in Sam Sonoff against us because we yeah. had Brayden Holpe's number this year. Yeah, if they put in Brayden Holpe, I think we're going 2-0 and oh, and then we're coming in 3-0, and well, to potentially go 3-0 and oh to Tampa and then worst comes to worst, you go 2-1. and one. So that's why I believe we're going to go Potent- I-, I would put it at two and one because I think it's a little bit too hung o to predict three and o because you have to have like a lot of things fall into place. You yeah. also have no one get a Nicky tacky injury where they're dead yeah. or something in the round robin. So that's another side of it. So I'm going to say two and one. Okay, I mean I can see exactly where you're coming from though, Perlo, because if if we're treating this just like a preseason then and we're playing everybody, then yeah doesn't really matter oh yeah and and, and, in all essence it doesn't really matter how we shake this all down i mean it does they put some value to it by saying okay if whoever has the best record is going to be the best seed okay well so now you've got four teams what are you going to do if all four teams go one and two or two and two i mean you know what i mean now what Goal differential. Like right. That. So that's what I mean. So I, I can understand exactly what you're saying um, by by picking them go to go one and two because we – I think we're in agreement that we think that they're treating this kind of as a preseason or maybe that's what they're thinking because they are going to play all the kids. They are going to give everybody yeah, the shot. You the know what word. I mean? Yeah, that's the key word. We are going to play all the uh, kids. I don't think – like AV even got it. We're not going to play the whole roster. Like you're right, probably see right. Tyler. You're probably not going to see Tyler uh, Watherspoon and Andy <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and um, all those guys. No, probably the, not. <laughs> you no. might see the one guy you might see because he might be used if you want to go with the veteran presence, if you know you're going with Thompson at the forefront. The only veteran you might see from the Phantoms is Andre off in the round robin because if you're thinking he would be your fourth line center first to replace Thompson, then you're going to want to get some under his legs. You're not going to want to just be throwing him in there if Thompson goes down. He's the only veteran I would think has a – because you Tyler Watherspoon, you might play in the exhibition. I think those guys might have a chance to play in the exhibition so they skate some and have game action. But I don't think they're playing the round robin because the only way yeah. to get in is if all hell breaks loose. Because you're going to have to go through go like ghosts would get in before any of those guys, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, We've never seen this before, and I'm going to be really interested to see what the philosophy of each team is going into here. Because um, we remember that the team we're going to be playing in the next round is already in 
that mode of competition, right? That where they're going to be coming in with a lot of momentum already playing gotta win type hockey where we are going to be in a situation where we've kind of treated this like a training camp and now we got to go up against and there's there's a lot to be said about momentum maybe there's teams out there that say you know what we're just going to create momentum now and go and 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 try to create as much momentum as we possibly can going into that next round so it's going to be interesting the philosophy i know one thing ab can say he's playing every every guy that he's going to play but ab can also motivate as if that type of energy even though he's playing every guy you know what i mean so it may not matter it may right not matter. Yeah. especially that type with the of coach that can 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 play around like that so yeah. Yeah. all you have to do is look at the the series we did um in prague that's all you have to do is look oh, at yeah, what he did good, to the good, team there point, you know though. yeah mm-hmm. because we we traveled all the way over there Got everybody into shape, whipped everybody up, got some of his system rolling, you know what I mean, and was able to go out and play games. Yeah, exactly. So, That's a great point, and I think we're going to look really good coming into this round, Robin, with the coaching staff we touted in this video and all the good stuff. But this has been a fantastic video talking about all things Flyers. We're very happy that Pirlo and Steele were able to join us, but. I'll let you guys share your handles and give closing out points. Steele, I'll let you go first this time. Uh, thank you guys very much for having me. Like I said, it's a blessing and an honor to even be on the same screen with you professionals. Um, I feel very, very honored to be here with you guys. You guys do this uh, for a living, and I'm, I'm just the I'm just the weak guy out, you know what I mean? So <laughs> uh, you can reach me uh, on Twitter at SteelFlyers52. Uh, website coming out here real soon. Uh, that'll be uh, www.steelflyers.com. Um, also, you can check out my podcast on Google, Spotify, uh, and Anchor. Uh, um, check them out. I'm also on Apple, I found out today, too. So you can yeah. check me out on Apple, uh, the Steel Flyers podcast. So thank you very much, guys, for having me. You're very welcome, Steel, and you keep doing the great work. We love everything you're doing. And uh, Pirlo. Yeah, you can catch me on YouTube. Uh, my initial Pearls of Wisdom, wisdom is my handle. Uh, ch- and also what BPAL picks, I do, uh, it's, I do capping, which is profession, helping people with bets. Uh, you can find me on a Patreon, on Patreon, you pick up the app and uh, we help people make a lot of money there. So you can find me there at BPAL picks and the YouTube channel on BPAL. Uh, love to have you. And I love being on here. This has been absolutely fabulous. I um, bar, um, bar could steal you guys um, anytime. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so excited for the future of, of what happens with, with this and, uh, and for watch, being part of the Philadelphia yeah. uh, organization in general. It's fantastic. Yeah, totally. I echo all Agreed. that. Thank you for joining. And uh, this has been the most recent edition. You can find me at jjbora 26 on Twitter. The podcast at True underscore Philly Sport and True Philadelphian Sports Cat spelled out on Instagram. I also write for Pub Sports Radio and, of course, do work for Flyers Nitty Gritty with the great Jamie Baskell. This has been True Philadelphian Sports Cast, the grittiest take. For Pierlo, Steel Flyers, I'm Joe Boric. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out.